Welcome back to the channel, this is Wasabi. Uh, this is the battle on the Minsk map and we're following Marshmallow from King's Clan and his Chieftain T95 FE4201. The Clan Wars uh, war tank that everyone wants. Um, so he's heading down the west side of the map to positions that um, heavy tanks normally brawl. Uh, mediums tend to go down the east side of the map and TDs cover both sides. So just driving across there spots the FE215B, the British Tech Tree tier 10 tank, uh, heavy tank, um, but uh, neither of them connect. Now here you've got concrete blocks on each side but there is a bit of a uh, weakness here in that you can see um, that there are gaps between the concrete blocks so Marshmallow or Mellow is just trying to um, basically thread the needle there so we'll see how easy or hard that is now that ML managed to do that but probably just bounced off the top of the turret um, the Chieftain is noted for how strong the turret armour is uh, particularly it's a very flat turret so it's a bit easy to bounce off the top so he puts a direct shot in the ML2. Now this is a tier 10, tier 9 game, and so the um, ML2 is the Swedish tier 9 heavy tank, um, so he's got no problem going through the armour there. He is firing premium rounds, but uh, Mello is marking his tank. He's already got his first mark of excellence and working on his second. So the ML2 is backed off, and here you can see this is a good technique um, you can use to zoom out and get an idea of the lay of the land. Where are the enemy tanks? Uh, are they crossing? Are they in open position? So you can see that there's a chieftain there, um, basically in the middle of the area that uh, would, if he tried to push out into that side, would you know, be caught making him in a crossfire. So up comes the Conqueror, which is the tier 9 uh, British heavy tank. That's basically the Conqueror Super Conqueror replaced the um, FV215B, which is now a collector's tank if I recall correctly. Um, and the Conqueror is basically just, yeah, trying to get in the same sort of position that Marshmallow is, but on the opposite side, see if he can do some damage. And here you can see there's a bit of a bigger gap there, right on that edge, um, rather than in the middle there. The Conqueror just really picked the wrong position. He thinks that's a weakness for uh, hitting the Chief, so whereas the Chief basically has got a much stronger gun and hasn't any problem going through the hull armour of the uh, concrete. You can see there's a slightly smaller gap, but he's just managed to again thread the needle there and bring the concrete down to a single shot. So you can see just where the gaps are. Now the turret is strong, but the um, commander's hatch on the top is a weakness, so he's managed to hit that spot. Bit of a pixel shot, but again, just um, the accuracy of the gun. Although it's base dispersion is 0.35, it's not um, that accurate, but at these ranges that's not going to make a huge deal of difference to, um, to get an extra couple of points of accuracy. Now, Mello's not running any food, so he's just getting the base skills of his crew, um, plus equipment, which we can't see here, um, but nonetheless he would be running a vertical stabiliser most likely to minimise dispersion when he moves the turret or moves the tank. So there you can see there's a T10E4, which is a tank destroyer with a pretty big gun. Now, pretty useless position for that uh, tank as far as Marsh is concerned, or, or mainly because the E4's got no ability to get his gun without exposing himself, and Marshmallow is backed up by this Jagdpanzer E100 behind him, um, who you can see there, the E4 moved out of position and, and Mallow managed to get a snapshot into him as he pulled back. But the thing about the E4 here is it does have a weakness on the commander's hatch, which you can just see a couple of pixels of, and so Mello is just going to try and line him up when he's sitting still. See the um, British heavy tanks just pushing dead tanks around, maybe possibly to create some barricades or some protection, but um, that's causing a bit of movement there. So that shot probably just hit the um, top of the uh, stonework there, and Mello's just pulling out to see what the um, what's going on after the Jagdpanzer E100 managed to destroy the um, E4. So you've got the FE215B there and, and the E100. The E100 is still full health. Um, just bouncing some shells off there. 
and you can just see the lower plate even that just bounced mainly because of the angle of the lower plate now the um, Yagpan Z100 is having a good day there he's collected two tanks there who've basically been distracted and shown their sides or um, less of an angle than they they should have um, which um, basically Mallow's picked up some spotting damage there so he's got currently a total of 5,000 combined that's 3,700 damage he's done plus nearly 1,300 of um, uh, assisted damage and there the um, E100 is just uh, over angling there and Marsh gets a shot through his side you see he's trying to shide scrape but um, what Mello's trying to do now is basically increase the angle uh, by moving around and see whether he can nullify the, the side scrape you can see there he's got enough of a, uh, a view of that side there to, to basically go through it so he's getting the um, E100 down, he's tracked him so there's not much the E100 can do, he gets another damaging shot in and that uh, E100's getting down to a one shot territory and just fails to roll enough damage there um, this average damage is supposed to be 440 on the shell so getting uh, 409 was a bit of a low roll there unfortunately we left the E100 on um, alive but on pretty low health the Leopard PTA there is up in the background you can see where he's last spotted um, across the river not sure whether he's still there but um, he's bounced a few shots off the um, uh, the turret of the chieftain already although he just has put one shot in um, but he's being Mallow's being lit by that um, CS-59 which is the Polish uh, medium tank part of the new line that's come in that's the tier 9 version of it um, so you can see well within his view range so that's the that's what's keeping Mallow lit and the um, Leopard PTA is probably still just outside his view range so you won't see him so still a few tanks left in the game the Mallow's team is actually down fairly significantly about 3,000 um, hit, hit points although they're equal on tanks so we'll see how they go this two tier 10s left on the enemy team but there's three left on Mallow's team so that looks like where they've lost is in their lower tiers so I'll just see where this is 59 makes a mistake it's already collected a shot from from Mallow although again that was a bit of a low roll and he's blocking shots again from the leopard so he's still being lit um, either that or the leopard is blind firing. Mello puts in a blind fire into a bush he suspects that the leopard's in but you can see from the um, uh, dirt that flew up that that was either a miss or there was no one in the bush to start with. So there goes the one two one that Mello had some words with at the start so I'm not quite sure what uh, that was about. He probably had a look at his stats and uh, gave him some advice about whether he should be playing the game or not. But uh, we'll leave that as it is. The, um, now there's a Martian there, the um, T9 German heavy tank, and Mallow's just being a bit careful here. Again, he's got some concrete blocks to work with. Um, it's good and bad. It's impeding his progress trying to get around this E100, but uh, it's also giving him some hole coverage now that Martian's basically trying to side scrape there. And just as he does that, he notices the Striv, and again, just a bit of a pixel shot. Mallow gets a hit in to there. Martian makes a decision at that point to try and run away which I don't think is going to save him and uh, yeah his name don't shoot it's me I don't think that's going to save him as well so Mello gets a hit in on him he's already up to nearly 7,000 damage and gets a tracking shot on the uh, Martian and starts to collect some more assisted damage here so he switches to trying to shoot the turret but I think he must have just got the mandalet and uh, which failed to penetrate but he's now collected uh, just under 2,900 assisted damage so he's uh, getting up the totals here his combined score is uh, just under 8,400 so there are only three tanks up uh, but now they've got a significant advantage in hit points so it's just a matter of hunting down the remaining tanks now all four of them were spotted along this line so good opportunity still for Mallow to collect some more damage and you've got the M48 pattern which has got a pretty hard hitting gun but not a whole lot of armor uh, object 907 uh, which can have some pretty trollish armor um, and a 
excellent rate of fire and DPM, uh, the Type 61 and the Skoda T T50, both of those uh, tier nines. So you can see the um, M48 pattern's been lit and Mello's hurtling down here as far as um, Chieftain's Turtle and the Type 69 poked out but then thought better of it. He's probably a one shot to Mello um, as long as his gun <laughs> works properly. But uh, let's just see what he can get out of this. The Type 61's probably run away, the 907's lost some health um, and the pattern's not full health either. So it's still it's looking good um, so far, but uh, here comes the pattern, not looking exactly at Mello. Mello's got just the right angle on so that the uh, pattern bounces off him, but he'll have to come around the corner here and he won't be angled as well. And the pattern's got a relatively fast firing gun, so he did get a, a big hit on him, just uh, 429 there. And another shot, low roll, Mello's left him on 79. And uh, will he get the kill or will the... Um, Tank behind him, get it. Yeah, the E50 cleans up. Awesome anti 34 there. And so Mello can progress. He's just ticked over 8,000 damage directly. And he's looking probably for a 10k combined score here. Which is going to help him immensely with his marks of excellence. So, just pushing on. The um, Type 61 looks like it's running. Uh, the 907, last seen in this spot, both not visible now. He's down to his last two shells of premium ammunition though. Um, so will he get it? And you can see he's del deliberately didn't snapshot there the Type 61 rather than waste his shot so he's going to try and get a, an opportunity to, to get a more considered shot in. Uh, type 61 didn't pull out there but he's now got effectively a side shot on the um, Object 907 and it turns into a frontal shot but he doesn't make any mistake getting through there. The 907 bounces off him. Will he get another shot in? Well, the Nino's just getting out of the way, but he's left enough of his turret visible, and the Chieftain doesn't have any problem going through there. Type 61's remaining on 57 hit points. Will Mello get there? No, the base has been captured, and that's the game. So that was an ace tanker game from Marshmallow. Uh, managed to collect the high caliber award, as well as the steel wall and confederate. Awards, uh, 165,994 credits with 3277 experience and seven bonds. Uh, finished with a total of just under 11,800 combined, of which his direct damage was 8,885. And uh, with base experience of 1499, a great result for tier 10. Uh, you can see the, um, his equivalent chieftain on the enemy side got just under 4,000 damage, but really probably through positioning wasn't long enough in the game to influence the outcome. So 35 shots fired, uh, all of his premium ammunition, 26 uh, connected but 21 penetrated. Um, spent 168,000 on ammunition, almost balanced by the amount of credits he earned, so he only lost 17,000 uh, credits for that. Well done Mallow, great result.